Well, the spring seems to be in the air finally, so of course that brings our attention to our old cars once again. And um, winter's been spent doing some modifications, painting and trimming of this big Oldsmobile station wagon. And some things I've been wanting to do have been some modifications to the transmission, namely the governor. The governor is a part of the transmission that regulates at what RPMs and when the transmission is going to upshift. This is regulated also with what's called throttle pressure. That'll be part of another subject at another time, but in this instance we're concerned about when it shifts and what RPMs. Now, an engine is usually tuned, or excuse me, the transmission is usually tuned for its axle ratio as to when um, I mean it will upshift and the governor weights in it are tuned for that as well. In this case the transmission that's on this car now is a 200 R4 automatic and the final drive on the original car that this came from I believe was in the high twos like a 287 or 289 roughly but uh, this car has got 373 final drives on it so the problem that happens is that when you floor the car and you leave it an automatic drive of course the drive shaft is spinning a lot faster now for a given road speed because of the much steeper gears in the back so of course this device is going to be spinning a lot faster and these weights get thrown out against hydraulic pressure like that and that signals the transmission to upshift so in this case what was happening with this car left an automatic drive and was upshifting at roughly like 31 3200 rpm which is not even near close to the RPM that the engine is capable of, which is roughly, I say, safely 5,000 just to be realistic, and that's more than enough on a bigger motor and an older car, certainly is. So what I did was, I took a little bit of weight off of the edges of the governor. On the small governor, you see, there used to be a notch just like this on this side, but that's been removed. And on this side, all I simply did was just file down with a, a rat tail file to get rid of some weight. The big weight on this side weighed about 42 grams to start with, and now weighs about 43. The small one will weigh 22 and now weighs 21.5. So you do this in small increments because if you take off too much weight, it will never shift. You'll, you'll, you hold your foot to the floor and the thing will never upshift for you. So you want to do this in small increments and hopefully I'll get it right on the first time. And even if I bring up the uh, automatic shift to like 42, 4300 RPM, that'll be more than enough, uh, which will make it perfectly fine for, like, say, entering onto a highway and I have to grab a lower gear because the darn thing just won't stay in a low gear long enough to keep it to its torque range. So we'll see what will happen with that. Another modification to be done on these um, types of transmissions, 200R4s, is a pickup. They just have this this orangey seal over here and this tends to suck in air around the edges so you get so of course you get not a solid column of uh, transmission wheel getting pulled into the pump. So you modify that by putting on a couple of O-rings. This is from an air conditioning kit of some sort so hopefully that will help with that problem. Another thing is when you really stand on the pedal of these cars, the fluid tends to get kicked to the back of the pan and that exposes the bottom edges of the filter because the oil gets pushed back so far. Now in these 200 R4s you can keep them about a liter or, or a US quart above full. That really won't hurt too much and you won't get any foaming um, because the fluid still won't be high enough to hit the uh, rotating gears in the transmission. But regardless, under extreme situations you still will you still will have the fuel, or excuse me, the uh, the transmission fluid vacating this part as the car accelerates and the seams of this filter aren't tight. So what will happen is it will pull an air from around here so you get mushy soft shifts and, um, and if you keep doing that it will eventually burn out the clutches and the band in this particular transmission. So what's going to be done is going to be JB welded around the edges all around and then I'll put on a, a thin stream of silicone glue and that will make it so that it will only grab in the transmission flew from this point over so hopefully that'll take care of the cavitation problem I've been having on some on some harder launches with the car and the upshift automatic problem will be taken care of. The pan looked pretty clean inside the car when it was taken off and um, if they ever tell you that a transmission only holds about three and a half or four liters in the pan, yes I did start it before it was draining the fluid just to make sure that it wouldn't be totally uh, crazily full of fluid but regardless about six and a half seven liters of fluid at least came out of the transmission and thank goodness I had a much bigger pan on it because there would have been one heck of a god awful mess underneath this car so um but anyway but that on goes the saga with this old uh, Mobile Vista Cruiser station wagon and we'll see what the driving season is going to bring to us one day at a time one adventure at a time happy cruising happy motoring